Have the slides come through, Sean? No, they're still filtering through the system. Well, I could um, uh, just plop this through in an old fashioned 19th century sort of way. I think I can make most of my points. And uh, cool. I apologize for uh, not getting this right the first time. Sounds like a plan. The chalk talk without the chalk. Okay. So um, um, you all know about Shiny, and um, uh, it, it's certainly very popular and very capable. Um, uh, I work um, uh, primarily on uh, matters of gene regulation in erythropoiesis, um, and there's always new kinds of data. Um, most of the, the visualization that we see that takes advantage of all of the, the very fine uh, JavaScript uh, libraries, most of them are uh, presentation graphics. And so, for instance, today we've um, I've seen some fine graphics, but the, but I think the way that most of us work is much more exploratory. Um, exploratory. We spend most of our, uh, our time exploring data, um, new kinds of data, looking for insight. And so what I GVR uh, does is that it, it establishes an uh, open and reciprocal um, connection between your R session and uh, JavaScript in the browser. We do this um, using the same um, WebSocket uh, library, HTTP UV that, that Shiny is built upon and the 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 simple the single and and the key difference is that is that when you uh, launch um, visualization in shiny you lose your console um, all manipulation um, that occur, uh, occurs within the GUI in the browser um, so uh, I build upon the um, the redoubtable um, IGV JS uh, from Jim Robinson and his crew, and um, the um, uh, IGV JS is um, uh, is the the um, web bit based version of uh, the IGV desktop that that, that is probably um, known to many from the broad. The um, the scheme is that um, uh, there's many kinds of tracks and um, they can be created uh, through data manipulation in R, uh, frequently made more tractable by just being um, uh, covering a region of interest. Um, so the simplest thing is uh, uh, if one has a simple bed-like structure with a chromosome name, start and stop, um, uh, you create a data frame, you send that to the browser, and you see that that tra track displayed. The next step up is um, um, rather than an annotation track, it is a quantitative track. You can think uh, um, WIG there, where perhaps every chromosomal location has a different numerical value. And they too um, uh, are either read in in R or um, created on the fly. Um, and again, one just creates a track of the, the right to type and displays it. Um, and so this sort of cumulative process of uh, different sorts of tracks, um, um, we also support uh, Jim Robinson's GWAS track and BCF. Um, um, it's, a uh, um, it's a very flexible system to think through your data, learning what you can, um, by visualizing it, which I think we all know, um, from the basics of, uh, tried and true scatter plots. It, if you look at the data, you often see things which are not apparent. Um, if you just look at, at, uh, numbers or statistical summaries. Um, is there any hope on the, um, the, the slides? We've, we've got the slides. We can't get your face off of the screen now. 
<laughs> um, if I were to leave the camera, would that happen? Not that we don't mind looking at you. You're very funny. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, that may be up for discussion. <laughs> We um, the the other thing that okay we've got we've got the slide but we're we're also running short on time so you're going to give us the blitz version yeah um, so yeah, one um, minute countdown boss one minute uh, so if you um, show the um, final slide and um, so, so this is a good example from a current problem. Um, um, so we have uh, CTCF uh, chips seek in the vicinity of GATA2. Um, you can see the pileup. Um, it, it was just a commander to to to, to uh, render that data. Uh, then the narrow peak is shown in red, and then um, motif matches in brown below that, and uh, histone marks at the bottom. And my claim um, is that this is all very straightforward to do with sort of native bioconductor data types um, and uh, that the aggregation of these different kinds of data can be helpful. That's what I, I will say. I wish I knew about I'd known about this one before our talk because I used it instead of regular IGV. This is terrifically powerful. It seems like it can't possibly be any harder to use than uh, the web sharing. So thank you for a wonderful talk. I don't think we have okay. a ton of time for questions, but if people want to ask them online, I'd highly encourage you to check out the slides. Uh, this is a tremendously powerful tool. And next up, we got our 10 o'clock. We'll, we'll try to make the slides available to everyone too. So apologies for the technical.